This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is looking at why hot air rises. It's part of the atmospheric science playlist. And we're going to look at why an air parcel rises when it gets hotter or adds thermal energy to the air molecules. So what we're looking at is thermodynamics in the atmosphere, which is an introduction to physics. And the thermo part is heat energy, obviously thermal energy, and the dynamics is the movement. So how heat and energy is moving inside the atmosphere, which is being fed by the original radiation from the sun and how it's reflected, scattered and moved within the atmosphere between the exosphere really and the earth's surface so looking at different types of energy this energy is either potential kinetic chemical or internal which leads us to the types of thermodynamics which is going to be conduction radiation and convection as the three principal types and we're looking at thermal energy we are discussing the energy that is released into the environment which we can measure on a scale either in Kelvin, in Celsius, or Fahrenheit. Now, Kelvin is the most scientific because it does work with absolute zero, whereas centigrade and Fahrenheit have their own scales, which all see end and based on the temperature of water boiling or freezing. And when we look at released energy, what I mean is the energy given off by air molecules. And what we know as temperature is based on the degree or level of thermal energy. There is nothing really called cool energy. It's only basically the increase of thermal energy or the decrease or reduction in thermal energy, not the not the addition of cold energy. It doesn't really exist. So it's based on the collisions of the air molecules in a certain area or certain volume mm -hmm. of the air that we call an air parcel. It's just a simple unit of measurement within the atmosphere to define a certain system and what happens within that system of a given number of air molecules. So we can look at it in more of a focused viewpoint rather than taking the entire atmosphere as a whole, which can be very, very daunting as it includes the entire planet. So if we take an air parcel, there's a given volume and unit of air, and we have our air molecules. The amount of collisions that occur within this air parcel will define the temperature, either in Celsius or Kelvin. We don't really use Fahrenheit too often. So the amount of collisions dictates the thermal energy released into the environment, which we record as temperature. So now we've looked at what temperature is and the different types of energy and thermodynamics conduction, radiation, convection, we're looking at the location of what we're talking about in terms of hot air rising. So looking at the troposphere being the lowest layer, the first layer next to the surface of our atmosphere, and looking at the solar radiation that is coming in from the sun and traveling through the different layers, the initial layers like the exosphere, thermosphere, mesosphere, stratosphere, and eventually the troposphere, and it reaches the Earth's surface. A portion of this radiation reaches the surface, and the surface absorbs that radiation, that spectrum of energy that is given. So it's mostly going to be visible light, some UV radiation, and it's shortwave. Now, the Earth's surface then starts to heat up from this absorbed energy. We don't really discuss the interior heat from the core or decay of materials or convection currents or any kind of like tectonics in this situation. It's just really the radiation from the sun that is heating up the top layer of the crust, maybe the first few meters. So what happens is the Earth's surface is going to transfer through conduction, thermal energy, conduction is touch, and the air that is right above the surface is going to be added heat, added some thermal energy from our surface. Let's imagine that we have this air parcel filled with air molecules and it's close to the surface, so the increased air pressure and air density due to gravity and the fact that there's more air molecules close to the surface than there is higher in the atmosphere. And we have this air parcel. Let's just say that it's the same amount 
of energy across the entire atmosphere. So this whole area, including the air parcel, has the same amount of thermal energy. Let's say that this darker surface right here under the air parcel is going to give off increased thermal energy. So we're going to add heat because right now before the, the heat is added there is no movement of this air parcel it's the same temperature as the surrounding air the surrounding environment so there's no difference in buoyancy no difference in density but now we're going to add some heat some thermal energy now the thermal energy you're going to have increased kinetic energy with the air molecules that equals movement you already have a certain level of atmospheric pressure based on the amount of movement that's there. There's always going to be some sort of movement and kinetic energy within the air molecules because it's a gas. There's, less, there's no bonds holding them together. And it's a free state of matter. And they're going to fly around. And they're going to collide with each other. So there's going to be some level of temperature and some level of pressure when, it, when these air molecules, in theory, hit the walls of the air parcel. But now we've added more heat more thermal energy we've increased the kinetic energy within the air molecules they become more excited they move faster they collide more so we add more collisions so collisions increase and we're going to then increase the temperature through more collisions and because these air molecules are more excited they're going to occupy more space so they're going to naturally increase the volume of our original air parcel to make the air parcel bigger like this so a larger volume means that you're going to decrease the density because the same amount of air molecules are still inside the original air parcel volume but now because the air molecules have been added energy through conduction and you have this increased kinetic energy within the air molecules and the increased internal energy and potential energy that you're going to have this increase in volume of the air parcel this would decrease the density and also it would increase the buoyancy therefore with a increase in buoyancy with a lower density and larger volume this air parcel is more likely to rise up because it's more buoyant it's lighter and more buoyant than the surrounding environment and will rise up so this parcel of air will rise so we have hot air rising due to changes in the volume of the air parcel changes in the kinetic energy of, of the air molecules also we have an increase in temperature through increased collisions which will naturally at the same time increase the volume which will increase but buoyancy now this hot air is going to rise until it reaches a point of stability the stability comes where the density and the buoyancy of the air parcel is going to match the surrounding area so it might rise 10 feet and then become more stable and stop rising because it's the same temperature as the surrounding air or it may rise 10,000 feet into a more stable atmospheric condition so this is the basics when you add water vapor into the mix you get the water cycle you get condensation at a certain level certain temperature and the dew point and the lifting condensation level and you get the creation of weather systems and patterns of weather and you get difference in pressures so when the air is rising it creates low pressure on the surface and when air is sinking because it's more denser than the surrounding air it's going to create higher pressure so this is the foundation of atmospheric science and meteorology and even extreme weather how it's created so the understanding of how hot air and why hot air rises both physically and in relation to atmospheric science can lead you to a whole world of new information on how the atmosphere functions this is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.